Good evening and welcome to Greater Somerville for January 10th, 2012. I'm Kyan Anderson. With the new year upon us, we thought we would deviate uh, from our political uh, spectrum this evening to concentrate on those dreaded New Year's resolutions that I'm sure all you viewers at home have made and are now diligently trying to adhere to. Whether it be pinching your pennies to save up for that iPad or watching the inevitable stampede to join your local gym to lose weight, I'm sure you'll pull something valuable out of tonight's episode. Tonight we focus in on fiscal and physical fitness in 2012 to help Greater Somerville ring in the new year. Our guests tonight are both members of the Somerville community and business owners. Our first guest is a certified financial planner and partner in, Co in the Commonwealth Financial Group located on Summer Street and College Avenue in Davis Square. Treasurer of the Board of Directors for Groundwork Somerville, a Vice Chair of the Somerville Chamber of Commerce, and a friend of the community path, Rebecca began getting involved in the Somerville community when she started her financial planning practice in 2004. While not always in the financial advising industry, she graduated from Tufts University with a degree in international relations and German studies before realizing that she could work in the business world and still positively impact other people's lives. When Rebecca isn't attending a community meeting, she, she calls herself home, oh, oh, excuse me, she calls Spring Hill home for the past nine years. My second guest is a co-owner of the training room that's located on Somerville Avenue just outside of Porter Square. Working in the fitness and athletic field for the past 12 years, Marin is a Division I recruited athlete and graduate of Boston University. She began her work as a tennis coach and a private instructor before getting certified through the National Academy of Sports Medicine and Hard Style Kettlebell certification. She has worked as a personal trainer and fitness instructor for over 10 years before opening the training room in May of 2009 with her co-owner, Heidi Brown. As if this weren't enough, Marin has successfully completed 12 marathons, as well as satis or qualifying for the Boston Marathon in 2006 and 2007. In addition to that, she just completed the 2011 Comrade Ultra Marathon in South Africa, where she went 56 miles in under 12 hours during an up hill year. I think it's safe to say that with a fitness resume like this, Marin is not someone that you want to mess with. Marin has called Somerville home for almost seven years and currently resides in the Spring Hill area. Please join me in welcoming Rebecca and Marin to Greater Somerville for their debut appearance. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, oh, I forgot to say, callers, if you want to call in, we're going to open up the phone lines, but give us a second to talk, you know, talk, catch up a few things. Um, 617-9, oh, excuse me, 617-628-9876 if you want to ask any questions tonight. Um, so a little background. You guys are nervous, okay. I can tell. This is okay. This is okay. Just relax. As long as we're looking into the camera, we're good. Um, so the Commonwealth Financial Group, it's in Davis mm -hmm. Square. Mm -hmm. Tell me a bit about a little bit about that because that's not, um, it's it's part of a larger umbrella, but you're your own entity in Davis and you're local, correct? Exactly. I'm considered an independent contractor. I've chosen to affiliate myself with a larger firm because of the resources that they offer. For example, we have an estate planning attorney on staff, mm -hmm. multiple investment specialists on staff. So it provides sort of a back office that yeah. can greater serve my clients. But myself and a business partner have an office just outside the Davis Square T-Stop. Okay, so you have a, you're able to provide a little bit more of a smaller office feel with the larger office resources. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Now, have you always been um, good with your money? I have, actually. I was that kid who <laughs> saved every penny of Don't. her um, babysitting money. And actually, my parents are incredibly frugal people. Really? And they instilled that in us from a really young age. My dad actually had us contributing to our IRAs during college. Oh, my. With our summer savings. Okay, fantastic. Well, how old were you when you started your first job? Well, it was... I started contributing when I was 18, so oh my yeah, I've okay. been babysitting since I was 12. Nice. Okay, nice work. And what brought you to Somerville? Um, I actually uh, moved here when I was college freshman. I attended Tufts, okay. and I've never left. Because you fell in love with it. We've I all did. fell in love with Somerville. Now, the training room. Let's talk about that. What okay. brought you to Somerville? Um, I actually started uh, personal training in the Cambridge area for a while and then uh, moved over to this area. Been here for about six years and okay. um, decided to best place to set up shop. Best place to set up shop, literally owning a residence and a and home. And business. Yeah, yeah, business. Nice. So now you've always have you always been physically fit? Is this something? Yeah, I've always been into athletics. Okay. I would say I've always been physically fit. Basically, I could fluctuate with you know 
where that would be. But um, yeah, it's always been a huge part of my life. And has it were there influences, say, growing up, like you had to save your allowance <laughs> and put it into an IRA, which I love. Kids at home, you should be doing that. Um, what about you? Were your parents um, or? My mom and dad were both pretty into sports, but my mom always um, basically kept me involved in team sports. And then occasionally, or uh, eventually, I wound up actually getting really into tennis, which was a one-on-one -on -one thing. Okay. Uh, Miss the team sports, but it was weird that I got into running because I did not like running at all for not, practice or anything. This is a total sidebar, yeah. but we can do this because it's a live show. But <laughs> I actually did the same thing. I, I ran one marathon in my life, checked it off the list, but I, I never got into running. I was like, I hate it. And yeah. then just something happened, and you start and you catch the anyway. And then now look it, at you, you're owning a business. It's when it stops to become a job and it yeah. stops to become enjoyable that you actually, so that's how I try to take everything. No, now. I think that's so. a good rule of thumb. Okay, so we're going to start with you. Physical fitness, that's, a, that's something that I'm sure everyone's striving for. I know I am. I am not as fiscally fit as Rebecca here, I'm certain. But um, So one of the things that a lot of people always strive for in the new year is like, okay, I've got to be better with my money. So I'm all about lists. And if I can, and I, I kind of force you guys to be like, okay, what are the top, but only because people remember lists. And if we were to say like top three things, mm -hmm. if you were to pick, if we're, you know, trying to attack this fiscal elephant, by pieces, like little chunks. What would be the top three things that you could recommend mm -hmm. to people at home to say, okay, you know what, you should really start this. This would be a good start. Okay, well the number one thing is to set up a budget because it's really important to know whether you're actually saving anything at the end of the month and where all the money is going if you're not saving anything. The second thing I would say would be to make a list of financial priorities because if you do have some extra money you could be setting aside, it's important to know what your own goals are and where you want to be setting that money aside. Okay. And um, the third thing I would say is um, to set up a monthly savings plan for whatever goal, whether it's in for retirement or for short-term savings, whatever that is, if you have it set up monthly, you're much more likely to achieve that goal. Yeah. Most people go into it thinking, well, at the end of the month, whatever's left over, I'll save. Yeah. And as we know, Americans are not exactly known to be great savers. Yeah. So if it's set up as, you know, every month I'm setting aside $300 and making that a priority, or $3,000 or whatever someone's budget allows for, um, it's more likely to happen. So here's a quick question. In terms of... I've been meaning to set various things up for a while. So is it is setting up various accounts, things like that, That's you can usually do that all within one bank, right? I mean, that's typical, like whether it be a Roth IRA or like a retirement. You can do a lot within one institution, right? You can set up various accounts. So they can extract money, like what you're talking about. They can take mm -hmm. it out of your direct deposit check. I mean, that's really, it's not that challenging to do. It's just right, the short lazy. answer is yes, <laughs> you could do that. So I'm lazy, folks. <laughs> folks at home, I'm lazy. Okay, so here's the question. What are some of the things, um, working with a financial planner, like when mm -hmm. do you think I, uh, that it's a good time to start? Because I think the big thing for people is, oh, I don't have enough money. I don't really need a financial planner. And so mm -hmm. what, what would you say to that? Um, the, well, I certainly can't speak to everyone because there are certainly firms that have minimums. You know, you have to have a million dollars to work with our firm or okay. um, $100,000 or whatever it is, depending on the different firm. Um, for me, the biggest thing is to be in the right place in terms of one's life. So when, when someone decides they're at the point where they're motivated to make changes, they're motivated to set aside the time to get things started, is usually a good time. And okay. a lot of times for people, it's because of some sort of life event. It's usually not out of the blue. Sometimes it's a New Year's resolution, but yeah. a lot of times it's because of marriage, divorce, starting a new job, retiring, changing careers, different life events. So here's a question, and I think it's a little bit like, you know, getting to know someone in any realm, whether it be dating or otherwise, mm -hmm. but, you know, um, when you're, if you're going out and looking for a financial planner, mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot of it has to do you know, should you shop around? You know, should you, you know, kind of, you know, chemistry, yeah, right? Exactly. Because, I mean, like, exactly. uh, if I'm going to be, like, sharing my, you know, financial laundry mm -hmm. with someone, I, I, what are your recommendations on uh, finding the right fit? Um, first of all, I absolutely love that you mentioned dating because I often compare it like um, like dating to um, to clients because sometimes people say, well, how do I know I want to work with you? And I'll tell them, look, I'm asking for a first date, not for an arranged marriage. You know, yeah, yeah. I want to spend a yeah, half hour with you and decide we if we're a good fit. don't need the marriage papers. The marriage certificate isn't going to be signed. Yet. Exactly. So usually, um, <laughs> you know, by design, I plan it for me, myself. I plan a first meeting, take a half hour with a um, prospective client to see if we are a good fit or not. The types of questions that people could be asking are, 
um, of the of the potential advisor are, or the potential financial planner, I would say are, um, what's your ideal client? Because if, if your concern is you want to start a retirement plan for your small business, which maybe is, is a concern of yours, maybe not, um, you, you know, and the, and the answer that you get is, oh, I work with high net individual, high net worth individuals over 65, that's yeah. not going to be a good fit, okay. even if they're the greatest planner in the world. But a lot of it, as you said, just comes down to chemistry and trust. Okay. And so in terms of, uh, here's the thing, like what if a person isn't quite yet ready to commit mm -hmm. to a financial planner mm -hmm. or go on that mm -hmm. first date? You know, are there areas that they could look at? Because I know there's a lot of, um, you know, you hear, Susie Orman, we'll talk about her later. But I mean, there's a lot of things and resources out there, whether or not they're good or not. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, do you recommend people pulling information from a specific magazine or not? We're not, you know, promoting any magazine, you know, you know but I'm just wondering, like, is that a, a solid way to do that? Is that a way to ease into financial planning? I think that... Um there, there's no harm in educating oneself, yeah. and I certainly don't want to recommend any one any one person or any one you know blog or book yeah. or anything like that. But I think that having an educate a basic education, mm -hmm. knowing the difference, for example, earlier you mentioned a Roth IRA between a Roth and yeah. a traditional IRA, will make it easier than if down the road you decide that you want to work with someone. Then yeah, you're a little bit more versed in your options. Where I find sometimes clients um, run into we call analysis paralysis. They yes. collected so much information, Happens you might hear all the time. different um, opinions from different sources, and so there's there's not necessarily a care for that information overlay overload. Okay, so you're you're recommending getting your info. You're, you know, you can get some of your basic information mm -hmm. from the sites or from whatever books you may choose, mm -hmm. and then be able to to talk intelligently to your. You know, because it is it is like an interview. You know, you do want to talk to them and find out whether or not you know. Um, you know, here's here's another question. All these questions are coming up here. Um, you know, whether or not certain financial planners will you know monitor your um, investments all the time, mm -hmm. which obviously will make. The, the, the fees at the end of the year, you know, higher, or how, how is that based off of, like a financial planner, mm -hmm. um, do they base it off of what you earn in your investment over the year and then they take a percentage, or, how, or do you do an initial fee? How does that typically work? It depends. It there's depends there's on the different effect. models, and okay. even within um, even within my own practice, there's different models. Some people choose to pay a fee up front. Some people it's based off of assets under management. It really just depends on the client. Okay, and then you can determine at that point if you want someone to be a little more hands-on or, you know, I'm kind of one of those, I don't want to admit this, but the set it and forget it type of mm -hmm. people where if I, you know, put something in, I just, you know, I have a brother who's really into finances and it's great, but he won't give me any advice in it ever. And so I just kind of want to have hands-off approach, mm -hmm. but that's the reason to get a financial planner. It, or at least talk to them. <laughs> right. Well, we want to try to avoid, and certainly I'm not someone who's going to advocate, you know, day trading, and, and I'm not on the phone calling clients saying, oh, I have this hot new investment tip. Yeah, On a regular her. basis. You've got no. your whole headset. <laughs> no. But, um, but what we do want to avoid is, you know, the ostrich syndrome, which is, you know, sticking your head in the sand and not looking at any statements for five years and then waking up one day and saying, oh, did I have an old... 401k at old job, I don't even remember. So, you know, that actually brings up a good point about the market today because mm -hmm. I think the ostrich syndrome, um, there may be a lot of people that have had that uh, mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. I don't blame them. But, you know, how do you explain uh, with the market today? I know people are concerned about putting money into it. Mm -hmm. And what are some things, um, what are your thoughts on the economy? Where are we headed? And, you know, what can you do? I mean, obviously, you can't ease or predict, you can't predict the future, but what, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that to make people know, you know, what, to guide people, to right. guide the viewers at home? Well, as you said, I can't predict the future and I, I don't even want to um, hypothesize on where the economy is headed, um, especially not in an election year. Yes, this um, is true. A lot of opinions already on that. But um, I think the most um, prudent thing to do is, you know, from, from the planner side, is to make sure that we have a handle on what the client's trying to achieve. Because if it's in a long-term investment, then there might be different investments that are more suitable versus if they're saying, well, no, I might need the money in three years, yeah. that's going to be a different conversation. So it's really about, in, in, in recap, and then we'll go to the uh, physical <laughs> uh, fitness 2012, is, is that you really should have your ducks in a row or at least know what you want, right? I mean, so having, you know, understanding the basics behind things and knowing what goals you want and mm -hmm. have those set aside so that you can 
that you can make a more educated, as a, as a financial planner, you can make a more educated guess as to you know, whether or not it's a good fit for you. And you should that, sums that sums it up. Well, fantastic. Okay. Got to go get my financial planner. Um, all right. So we're moving into the physical <laughs> arena for a moment. Um, so Marin. Yes. Top three things. Now, this is one that I know all of you have been very, you know, I, I sometimes struggle to put my sneakers on to go for a run, especially when it's so cold. So what are what would be the top three things, you know, if you were to give people advice at home to say, okay, people, you know, if you were to do these three things, it may make this fitness goal not so daunting in 2012. First one, make time for yourself. You don't do that, you're not going to get it done. You have too many things going on, too many other jobs, too many things you're worrying about. Yeah. You're going to stress out, so you have to make some time for yourself, point blank. Okay. Um, number two, I would say, is uh, having a clearly defined goal. If you don't have a clearly defined goal, what are we working towards? So then when you come to me and you want to work on something, it's best to have like sometimes a more shorter term goal, which usually we can say is three months, mm -hmm. to a longer term goal, you know, maybe six months to a year. So if it is a marathon, we can plan yep. backwards from there. However, if it's a weight loss goal, let's set it up into uh, mini goals. Mm -hmm. And number three, since many of um, the talking points today are about nutrition, build a far safer, a bar, a far better relationship with food. Don't look at food as something to be scared of. And probably don't look at food as something to be food. <laughs> something to be a reward for everything oh, good you do not. because that gets that gets yeah. out of hand. So build a really yeah. healthy relationship with food. Okay. No, those are great. Okay. <clears throat> wow, that's a great segue. Um, so here's the question: How do you respond? Um, because I know some people are like, "Oh, I don't know if I'd be able to afford a finance or excuse me, financial a physical." <laughs> um, uh, uh, um, it's a good segue question. You know, I'm yeah. going to no, totally. But, uh, you know, uh, a fitness instructor, a certified yeah. trainer, a personal trainer. I mean, yeah. uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? And, you know, how you, do you uh, deal with you that? You set up a budget. I mean, mm -hmm. what is important to you? So I first say, well, depending on how, what your goal is, can you put a price on life, fitness, and wellness? So, again, if um, you have disposable income, depending upon what it is, uh, especially at the training room, I mean, we not tiered things so much, but we offer something for everyone. So we try to offer yeah. group classes which have up to 15 people or small group training which has up to six people or personal one-on-one -on -one training. So just because you're not with a personal trainer one-on-one -on -one doesn't mean you're not going to reach your goal. Yeah. It still gets you access to everyone in the facility. and. You know. Well, that's actually an interesting point because that was something we were... Um, you know, in our brainstorming session before the show, we were talking about various fads and things that are going on. Um, and I think that the group workout session has mm -hmm. definitely taken off in the last few years. I mean, it's, it seems to be, I, I just see it advertising more. And while it may be, say, a financially prudent yeah. thing, I actually think it's it's more about, you know, hey, let's it's go, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's, you know, you feel like, okay, if your friend is, like, sweating, like, well, okay, yeah. I, well, she's going to do it, okay, I guess I got to do it. It's almost like an accountability. We talk about this a lot at the training room. Um, what we say was, if anything, we built a community inside a community. So yeah. if anything, people who were going to boot camp were becoming friends, inviting each other to a barbecue or something like that, and then that helps. If so-and-so's not there, you're going to wonder, you know, maybe give them a phone call if so-and-so says they're going to skip it, or sometimes you make yeah. plans outside of the actual coming into the training room. So, oh, let's go for a run on Monday. I'll see you at the training room on Wednesday. Um, it just provides that extra step of accountability, mm -hmm. which is why I designed or why Heidi and I both designed um, the training room was for our clients to be more accountable to their goals. So now, how big is, like, how many clients do you have? Like, so you have, um, it's a little smaller space. I mean, it's not, yeah. it's, it's not amazing gigantic. what we can get done in a small space. But what, yeah, how many clients do you have coming in and out of there? Because I know a lot of people are concerned of, you know, you know, do you want somewhere crowded? Do you want a big place? Do you want a small place? I mean, I know that certain yep. gyms are very intimidating and... Yeah, no, it's got a very good feel to it. I mean, uh, there's no more than uh, four personal trainers at one time working on the, the main fitness floor. Mm -hmm. There could be a class going on inside the class. Our maximum class holds 15 people for like a cycling. Our small group trainings, we max them out at six people because it's important to make sure that everyone's getting their own amount of one-on-one -on -one attention. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, also, you know, that helps them to... Um, also feel that they're getting that personalized service, but yet yeah. maybe not, you know, going one-on-one. -on -one. But again, it all depends upon the goal, how we kind of parlay into what training yeah. approach is the best. Well, you know, because I do think that, um, and again, there's the Susie Ormans of the financial <laughs> world, but then there's the biggest losers of, of the fitness world. I will say, is it Jillian Michaels? Jillian Michaels from The Biggest Loser, that fitness trainer. 
she is so intimidated. She's no longer on the show. She's she's doing videos now or something like that. But I will say this, and that's one of the things that I I mean, you know, having just met you, I feel like, you know, when you're say just starting out, maybe a New Year's resolution or something, and you you've never really had a trainer. Like, I think that's again another chemistry thing where you meet your your you know personal trainer, right. and if you meet someone that's really has an intimidate, I mean, intense personality. I mean, you have a wide range of well, we all have to fit in a smaller space, remember that. So we have 2,600 <laughs> oh. square feet of space rather than so 10,000. Okay. No, all the personalities So you won't one. be yelling at me if I'm no, like doing like, a pull-up. It's like anything. Rebecca oh. said, it's, I always, it's, a, it's a first date, the assessment. You're, you're interviewing yeah. your trainer okay. like your trainer's interviewing so you. So first dates. Yep. That's my question. No, because I took this one time. I took this class. I'm not going to say where it was, but it was a spin class. And I tell you, I was getting yelled at. And I, and I, I can yell with the best of them, but this person was so intimidating. He was yelling at me on the spin. It was all. I never went back. And I actually went to the front desk and I said, you know what? Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm a tough cookie, but I will never take this class again. And um, anyway, so... I'm glad you don't do that. The difference between well. coaching, I think, and coaching. aggressively yelling. I'm just say. not into that. And I, some people really, like, they're really hardcore. So let's talk mm -hmm. nutrition. Okay. Um, I understand. I 100% yeah, I agree with you. And I wonder, um, your, uh, the training room, um, you know, offers many things. But you yourself, I mean, I think anyone getting fit needs to recognize nutrition is a huge, huge part of that. And one of the things in terms of fads and not fads, but things that are happening nowadays are, you know, there's definitely a lot more concentration on uh, food allergies, things of that nature. And you have a personal experience with this. Yeah, I actually well. have a uh, celiac disease. So, and, I, and what is, what is that? Um, it's actually an autoimmune disorder where your um, small intestine doesn't break down gluten. People call it an allergy, but it's not. It's, okay. a, it's an actual autoimmune disease, so it's not really? intolerance. Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think it's really important um, nutrition to have an understanding of food and what, um, get, well, what being diagnosed with celiac disease got me was it forced me to understand what food is, what it's made out of, how it's boxed, how yeah. it's packaged, how it's processed, and to break it down into, wow, we eat a lot of processed food in this world. And yeah. it's about time that we took a little more ownership over what we put in our bodies yeah. and treated it a little bit more as like, you know, we're given one. So let's work with it. Yeah. So um, I think, if anything, um, an education in nutrition and learning about it and being open to it, because it's not a, a point, flat table, blank, blank book for everyone. It's it's something you have to learn and get attuned to. Okay. So here's the, here's the thing. I'll ask the, a, a second question of you. The same yep. question. Um, so if someone's not ready to you know take the plunge and go in yep. and, and get a personal trainer and mm -hmm. a, a, you know. A nutritionist um, what would be some things that you know would be baby steps to you know because I do think that nutrition is very overwhelming on right. some levels I mean I, I I find it fascinating but you know it's like there's one you know you read that you can oh eat this and it's fine oh wait no if you eat this oh it, it does this yeah. I mean what would you recommend for a person to kind of take a baby step into that right direction two things first take a look in your cupboards and in your fridge and see what what's in a box Everything in a box basically is processed somewhere, obviously. And we're not talking about, um, like, if you look at the food store, for instance, look at it as a square. You want to shop on the outside of the food store. What's shop on the, on the outside of the square, people. <laughs> What's on the outside of the square? You got the vegetables, the fruits, the milk, the dairy, yeah. the bread, the grains, you know, the meat. Again, some people might cut up and down the middle a little bit, but mm -hmm. you, for the most part, can get everything you need. And that's what's great about Somerville is they have the winter market or something oh. like that. Yeah, it's great. So um, that's big here. And I think in Somerville, there's so many options for you to get great, real, healthy, local food, yeah. which is super important. Also, um, eating a little bit more with the season. There's a reason why strawberries are not in, in, in season right now. You yeah. couldn't find them anywhere here. So where are they coming from? They're yeah. being flown in, frozen in. Yeah. You know, what are so ask yourself those questions what's in season right now? Or yeah. root vegetables, things like that. Your body will change as the seasons change, so it's good to remember well, what kinds of foods are in season, not in, in fad, okay, and what kinds of foods are not in season, and that'll help you to kind of concentrate on what's the freshest and what's the best for your body. No, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so we, we have a few more minutes here. I, I definitely want to hit on a couple of points because I know there's a lot of questions for you, but one of the things that I want to touch on is that I know particularly women have um, a question about 
you know, personal training or physical fitness and or lifting weights, and they're concerned about getting bulky. Um, I've, I've lifted weights all my life, and mm -hmm. I, I don't think I'm too much of a hulk. And I think that, you know, what can you say to counter that point? Because I think that the Absolutely. value of getting, <laughs> you know, weights, weight training is so much better, more, the, more than, you know, a disadvantage. Um, sure. To give an example, I mean, um, my staff and I, we, we lift heavy all the time. I wouldn't call any of us bulky or big or Hulk Hogan. What actually gets <laughs> only more shape than yeah. I am. But it's, a, um, beside the point. it's a misnomer. It's, it's a huge misnomer, and it saddens me because you see women going to the gym and lifting five pound dumbbells and doing 20, 30 repetitions, and really they think they're quote unquote toning. Mm -hmm. But really, when it comes down to it, you're building endurance in that muscle. When you're lifting a little bit heavier, you're actually shocking or the, the neurological system a little bit. Okay. And that's actually building strength not bulking up your muscle. You're actually just gaining strength and power. You're not building in size. First of all, women don't have any of the percentage of testosterone that men have. We're not going to naturally <laughs> back up. There are some, I don't know. We're I've not going to naturally bulk up. I'm sorry. We're not going <laughs> to naturally bulk up. And the women in those magazines up. tend to be, you know, there's other <laughs> things that they may be using to help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not to be scared. The only thing I would say is if you are interested in gaining strength, yeah. because that is where the muscle tone and everything comes from, Find someone to make sure you're doing it right. Make that's sure no, the form is right. Form Please. is right, and you can do yep. smaller repetitions with a less weight, or excuse me, large repetitions yep. like a two by fifteen or a three by fifteen of a lesser weight, and that ensure. I mean, that ensures that you're not necessarily going to bulk up as much. Well, I, no, I mean, even we doing eight, eight, you know, eight to twelve reps, you know, is a good is a good thing. Even going less, you know, lower than that. If anything, you're getting your workout done quicker. Think about that. Yeah. If you're training your your biceps and your triceps and you're going through three sets of every exercise of 15 reps of one minute of rest, add that all up and you're in the gym yeah. for an hour. Yeah. I'm in and out in half. Yeah. So and that's another thing, you can, <laughs> you can get a, a big bang for the buck and not have to go to the gym yeah. that whole time. So you definitely yeah. can stick on those New Year's resolutions. And one of the things, the, the advantages, I always admire people that go into fitness is because they're always so happy. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm serious, after a 5K I run and everybody's like in such a good mood. And Some I mean, that's, that's why you get hooked on it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I want to thank um, uh, my two guests tonight for uh, stopping in. I, I do want to let people that they can find out more on our Greater uh, Somerville website um, about the Common uh, Wealth Financial Group, about financial planning in general, the training room, um, and all of our other episodes that you know you haven't watched yet but you want to. Um, a couple of quick things this afternoon, or excuse me, this weekend that are coming up. Uh, as we talked about, the Winter's Farmers Market is happening on Saturday mm -hmm. at 9:30 at the Armory, so make sure to check that out. And um, what else do we have going on here? Oh, Martin Luther King Day celebration on Monday, January 16th, 11 o'clock at the Somerville Theater. And it's a free event, and they're putting on a, um, a movie for celebration of Martin Luther King. Um, additionally, on Tuesday, January 10th, East Somerville is doing uh, Two for Tuesday, um, the business district. And basically, you go and you do a um, appetizer, whatever, and then you can um, get something for free. So you want to check that out and support East Somerville. Um, I'd like to thank our guests, Rebecca Shrum and Marin Kravitz, for stopping by Greater Somerville tonight and helping us stay on track with our New Year's resolutions for fiscal and physical responsibility in 2012. While it may seem daunting, just remember, change is always possible if you take one small step at a time. Please check out our website for more on tonight's episode and related links, as well as all our Greater Summer episodes. That does it for us tonight. Thank you to the viewers at home for watching. As always, stay safe, stay informed, and Happy New Year. Good night, everyone.